Hello world, Mr. Resistor, continuing our alpha journey, and see, first things first, let's check what our dailies are, do do do, we'll do that, and we'll do some mining. <laughs> and go ahead and claim those. Uh, take our new hurricane out a little more. All right. Um, I think. Let's see. Maybe want to try. <sighs> what about level four? Let's try level three. one for boundless creations here but I'm not seeing it <clears throat> I think Min Matar Mining Corporation sells the uh, chips, so let's go with them. I think that sends me through Olbra also, so yeah. We'll hit up the mining on the way back. Orb drive active. Do -do -do. Check the. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. So anyway, um, I had a user comment the other day that I wanted to discuss a little more fully um, I kind of replied via text but you know I'm not uh, I'm not an essay writer <laughs> and uh, that was kind of what it was going to turn into um, so uh, anyway I'll just uh, I'll just read the comment here um, and this is in a thread um, I think trying to trying to understand the the difference between alpha and omega, and what is required to uh, be omega. Drive active. <laughs> right. So, um, first I'll just you know point out for those who don't know, 
Um, let me maybe turn ship noise down a bit. All right. <clears throat> we could zoom out a little bit too. Um, <clears throat> so, broadly speaking, to be Omega, you can pay real money, um, either buying uh, packs or through subscription, right? Or you can use Plex to buy Omega um, using ISK in game, right? So, um, if you don't have real money to spend, um, you can earn Omega through gameplay. That, I think, is probably the most important thing to keep in mind throughout all of this. Um, it is expensive um, getting there initially, especially with alpha skills, can be a task, right? I'm not going to say that simple. We haven't done that yet on this channel. Um, when we do, you know, we'll see how it goes. I think I've got a strategy that will work. There are other strategies that are proven to work, right? I'm, I plan on doing faction warfare and LP conversion. Um, someone else recently commented that they were able to plex within about three months um, by doing null sec ratting. And that, uh, you know, as far as I can tell, they were starting from fully noob skills, right? So I think that's a, you know, that's a reasonable benchmark to look at. Um, and I don't know how many hours a day they were putting into, putting into that, right? Um, <coughs> there, I believe... Uh, I want to say Jake Leet uh, has a series about solo mining, and he starts off trying to essentially get to Alpha um, basically by mining Feldspar, if I can, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, I haven't followed that series, so I don't know how long it took him. Um, you know, but that would be that would be a place to look. Um, other people uh, run incursions, right? I haven't tried that, but if you are interested, um, join the Warp to Me incursions um, uh, comm channel, and uh, that would be the place I'd look for that. Um, another avenue that I've personally considered uh, is uh, wormhole and null sec exploration. And I think that could be viable um, as long as you're smart and actually make it back to market with the stuff that you find, um, which has always been my problem. But, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's another story. Um, so anyway, uh, the point is, there are multiple paths to get there. You could probably do it through industry also. I think that would be a slower path, um, just because you've got not just skills, um, but then you've also got blueprints to research and all that kind of stuff. So um, there's a lot, more, um, a lot more initial investment to taking that path. All right, so... Let's take this uh, mission, and here we go. <clears throat> All right. Um, so, anyway, that's the context. Here's the actual comment that I wanted to discuss today. Um, uh, so, 
are we able to pay, for example, a week uh, Omega Learn something and still be using the Omega Learn skill? No. Um, Omega Locked skills are only available when you have Omega status. Um, where's my pointer? There it is. Um, so you can see here I've got capacitor systems operation four, but I'm only able to use level three because four and beyond is Omega locked. Um, I think that's the only skill that I have. Uh, that's like that. But anyway, um, just wanted to get that out of the way real quick. One thing that I'm not sure of and that I might want to test is planetary interaction. Right? So so and my my question there basically is can I be omega while I set up planetary interaction or planetary industry? And then just let it go. Or is it going to shut down when I lose my Omega status? Um, but um, let's continue with the, uh, with the comment. I'll go ahead and read the rest of this before I jump into uh, this fight. So. Um, for what I saw, the only thing an alpha can do is one exploration, two PVE missions, three PVP. The rest is just for Omega players, be it skill locked, ships locked, or authorizations. For example, industry is almost everything for Omega. Secure transportation is also behind Omega skills and ships. I know there are many other ways, but I saw it is always an Omega game. Alpha players become just meat for Omega. So, I'll start at the end there. Alpha players become just meat for Omega. That's clearly not the case, uh, I think. Um, I am personally meat for other players in general in PvP because I suck at PvP, right? But that's not because I'm alpha. That's because of my skill as a player. Um, and there are other games where I'm perfectly good at PvP. This is just not one of them. All right, what's my range again? 52. Right. Forgot to start those. Get my drones out and start hitting them. Um, all right, so anyway, so first of all, let's talk about the things that, um, that he says Alpha can do. Oh, no. you to go after them. Okay. Which is... Exploration, PvE missions, PvP. 
Um, I mean, that's like most of the game. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I think, you know, unless, unless you're specifically interested in the other activities that he mentioned, um, that's the vast majority of what you'd be doing just in general, right? <laughs> um, and I think, you know, uh, those are generally the things that even people that are doing the other stuff, transportation, um, you know, industry, um, exploration, missions, and PvP are the things that, like, those folks are doing to earn money to support their other activities. So, um, I guess, you know, even if it was true that those are the only things that an alpha can do, I don't think that would be what, that much of a restriction. Um, <clears throat> but let's talk about the others, right? So, um, uh, I'll start with transportation. Um, cause that's maybe the, um, even though I haven't done much of it, even on other, uh, even on my Omega accounts, um, you know, that's kind of, a. um, excuse me. Hmm. Sorry. The, uh cough is still bothering me. Anyway, um, the thing about secure transportation is that it's really about strategy and tactics more than what you're flying. And that's, and that's true for all activities, really, right? Like, um, for the vast majority of things you could do in EVE, <coughs> strategy and tactics is what's going to get you through it. Um, that's certainly true for PvP. That's, to a certain extent, less true for PvE, um, just because of sort of the nature of the beast. But, you know, I'm not coming into this mission in a frigate, right? Like... Um, you know, you still kind of have to have the right tools for the job. That doesn't, but I don't need a Tech 2 uh, battleship to run this mission. Um, that would probably make it easier and faster, but um, in the past, I've run plenty of these in a regular hurricane lead issue hurricanes doing the job just fine and uh you know both of those are fully available to uh to an alpha player so um <clears throat> you know similarly with transportation um i'll talk about specifically you know, if we're talking secure transportation, I assume he's talking about blockade runners here. Um, one of my other accounts does fly a prowler, and it's a lot of fun. I'm not, like, it's really a surprisingly fun ship to fly. Um, 10 out of 10 would recommend. But the simple fact is, the vast majority of situations that the prowler's going to get me through a wreath is also going to get me through just because of using smart tactics, um, you know, 
using the information that's available, using the tools that are available. Um, right. So if you're doing a run, let's say you're running some stuff from heck to Jita, um, which I do occasionally. Um, that's a, that's a route that can definitely be dangerous. You know, um, thing one, don't autopilot. Um, you know, you want to be as fast as possible, right? So some of that's going to be having a decent fit for your ship, um, so that you're not taking forever to align, uh, and jump to the next gate. Um, you know, most of the time I'm landing close to the gate again, not autopiloting, you know, so on arrival at the gate, I get there pretty, uh, pretty close. I'm able to jump pretty quick. I'm not, you know, yes, there is some vulnerability there. And if somebody really wants to shoot me down, they're going to be able to do that. And yeah, the capabilities of the Prowler are going to minimize that quite a bit. But, um, you know, if you're smart about it, I think you can do most of those runs in a wreath. Um, you know, and thing one is use the tools that are available, right? So there's a website, eve-gatecheck.space. Um, go there, check your route, see if there are any, um, if there are any gate camps. If there are, then maybe, um, maybe pick a different route. Maybe wait to make your run, uh, at a time when it's clear, right? They're not gonna, they're not gonna be camping that gate all day. They're gonna be do it, doing it for an hour, maybe two, right? Until they get bored or until, uh, another fleet comes and blows them up, right? <laughs> um, but for the most part, you know, you can avoid um, you can avoid gate camps if you uh, do your research, right? Um, you know the other things there there are strategies for how to how to approach a gate, right? If you don't have information about it, um, you know, in a way that's going to be more safe, right? Maybe you jump. Um, maybe you jump to somewhere else first, an asteroid or a planet. So you're coming at it from a different direction than they're expecting you to, right? Maybe you jump in at a hundred kilometers and then immediately jump back out to somewhere else, um, so that you can see who's, if there's anyone sitting on the gate, right? And then either jump, you know, jump directly to the gate if it's clear or, you know, try and find another route, come at it from a different angle, right? Um, Cause you know, I mean, in order to tackle you, they have to be in range. And for most ships, that's like 10 kilometers. Like they've gotta be pretty close. Um, if you, you know, in a three dimensional space, you can work the angles so that it's not that hard to be outside of that range. Um, just by jumping in from a different direction than they expect you to. Right. Um, and there are going to be, there are ships that have much longer range for tackling. That's true. Those are going to be harder to avoid, but still not impossible. You know, the other thing is just being fast. Get in there quick, you know, um, fit your ship for minimal align time if that's, uh, if that's something you're worried about so that you can jump quickly, uh, hopefully before they're able to target you, uh, target lock you and, and, uh, 
and tackle you um, or before they're able to get in range to tackle you, right? Um, you know, just being quick about it and not wasting any time will get you through a significant portion of gate camps. Um, even, even in a noob ship like a wreath. Um, you know, and that said, even the Prowler is not immune, right? It's quick and it's got, uh, it's got stealth. Um, you know, but somebody who's really good or is using just the right gear, um, can still lock you down and, uh, and take you out. Um, you know, and then you've lost significantly more, right? So, uh, as in terms of the amount of resources you're putting at risk with a, with a prowler, it's significantly higher than, than with a wreath in addition to the value of your cargo. So, you know, I guess my answer is you can still do secure, secure transport in a basic hauler if you're smart and you're skilled and you use the tools that are available. All right, let's jump into the next this next room. Um, the real problem with doing transportation as a career is volume. Um, you know, if you're taking, if you're going to try and do transportation contracts, um, a lot of those are really set up for freighters. And, you know, so if you're not flying a freighter, then you're going to be kind of limited on what you can do. Um, if you are flying a freighter, then that's no longer as, you know, and you're going somewhere where security is a concern, right? You're outside of, you know, very high security space. That's not a solo activity anymore, right? You're running with a crew. You've got somebody scouting, uh, maybe... Uh, you know, maybe you're using, uh, you know, jump freighters or somebody's, you know, they're producing, uh, using sinusaural, uh, uh, warp things. I forget what it's called, but you know, the, the point is you're working in a team, right? Either, either you're multi-boxing or you're part of a corp that's doing transportation and has those support services available. Um, all right, let's blow some stuff up. Um, you know, so that's, but that's kind of a different game at that point, right? Um, I don't know. Um, so the other thing is uh, industry. Um, and yes, a lot of the big stuff with industry is gated behind Omega, but that's kind of the least of it as far as like what's needed to do that stuff. Um, I do have a character that does industry primarily and um, there's just so much time that you have to invest, right? There's a lot of, there's a lot of isk in like buying the blueprints and that kind of stuff. Um, and I certainly don't want to minimize that because it is a thing um, 
but um, you know, there's there's so much um, so much time spent researching blueprints and um, you know acquiring materials, doing all of the really like production uh management supply chain management all that kind of stuff like it's a it is a massive investment of not j of uh of your time as a player um And the thing about that time and the way skills work in EVE is that means you've got a bunch of time to be doing those other activities that are that are easier for an alpha to get into, right? Running PvE missions and that sort of stuff. Um, which you're gonna want to do anyway because you need that money to buy blueprints and you know maybe to buy materials also um if you're not mining them yourself which is again an entire other career path that maybe you want to um get serious about before you even think about getting into industry right Similarly, you know, maybe one of the easier ways to make money in industry is uh, is building rigs, in which case um, you want to be running missions and salvaging uh, all of these wrecks so that you can you can get all the the components you need to make the rigs. Um, rather than having to buy them. Um, <clears throat> you know, so I guess, uh, um, you know, but that said, industry is not Omega locked. It is certainly less convenient if you're alpha. And yeah, there's a lot of higher level stuff that you can't do. Um, you know, you can't do T2 production, for example. Um, but there's plenty of T1 stuff that you can build fairly easily and that is going to be profitable. Um, you know, uh, rifters and probes are pretty good, you know, if you're doing faction warfare um you can buy those blueprints and build those ships um and you know you can make a fair amount of money doing that that's that's a totally viable path for an alpha character to do industry um and you know and i well i think i think industry is probably going to be the slowest start as far as a career um you know if you're looking to if you're looking to plex um and not just buy omega with real money i think industry is going to be the slowest way to get started um once you're going though you can generate a fair amount of cash as long as you don't mind um doing all that project management work um You know, um, he didn't mention mining, um, but that is one of those areas, again, where, yeah, there are certain things that you can't do, right? Um, so you can't do uh, ice mining as an alpha. I believe Mercoxid is also limited. There might be, I don't know about null sec ores, 
because I don't I don't really go after those. Um, so there might be some some issues there, but generally speaking, you can hop in a venture. I'm pretty sure you can do moon mining in a venture. Not totally sure. Um, you know, you I know you can do all of the high sec and low sec ores. I think you can do all the null sec ores except maybe Mercoxit. Um, you know, and you can make decent money, you know, but at, at that level, you're probably best off just, uh, just going after, um, Feldspar, right? And there are going to be fleets, right? Like if you want to join the Heck Mining Association and join in with their fleets, um, you know, you can get boosts and compression and, and maybe even buyback, right? I think there are other organizations that'll do that as well. Um, and that are noob friendly. And, uh, so again, you know, it's still a viable career path as a noob, as an alpha. Um, it's not, the entire career path is not Omega locked. Um, even though I would argue to some extent that Omega locking is more of an issue with mining than with other activities, you know, you can still get in there and do it. You're just not going to be as efficient um, until you can get into those Omega locked ships, right? All the ore ships. Um, aside from the venture, right? The expedition frigates, um, the uh, barges and exhumers, um, and you know, but you can earn the ISK to get Omega as just an alpha in a venture if you've got the time to do it um and i think that's that's really um that's really the main actual limitation is just how much time you're willing to devote to earning the isk to buy the plex um generally speaking i'm lazy Right. Um, I've mentioned before, and uh, but I'll mention it again. I do have four other accounts uh, with six other characters. Um, those are all Omega, and I pay money for that because, you know, I have an actual job, <laughs> so um, <laughs> I don't have the uh, I don't have the time to devote to the game. To maintain Omega for those for those accounts, um, <laughs> and I'm not. Um, I wouldn't find that gameplay as fun. I think if I was um, really dedicated to maintaining. Omega status on the on those accounts, just through in-game activity, um, having to be that focused on is per hour. That's just not. That's just not the way I like to play games of any sort, right? That sort of min-maxing uh, attitude is just not, not my jam. Um, and, uh, you know, if it is your jam, then have at it. I'm not saying it's the wrong way to play. I'm just saying it's not for me. Um, but I think, um, and I'll, you know, 
and I'll stand by this, I, I think that within EVE, every career path has a way to earn the ISK uh, to plex your account. Um, you know, it's just a matter of taking the time to figure out, you know, the most efficient ways to do it, um, putting in the time. Um, but I think it's possible. And I think hopefully, you know, through the, uh, I believe this will be number 607. So, you know, I think that over the past 607 episodes, I've shown that there's a lot of stuff you can do in this game without being Omega. Um, as far as I know, the only activity that I have done on this account that actually requires Omega, um, although I used a, uh, Oh, what are they called? One of these things. <clears throat> Expert system. Um, anyway, the only thing I've done on this account that actually required Omega was ice mining. Um, ice mining is not a thing that I really do on my Omega accounts. It makes sense if you if you own a station, um, you can save some money making your own fuel, um, and you need ice mining for that. I don't own a station. Um, so that's not really a thing for me. Um, you can sell the ice. I think it's more profitable to just, uh, just mine asteroids. Um, for the amount of time that uh, that's required. Um, <clears throat> similar for gas, right? Like, gas fetches a high price, but it takes a lot of time to gather it. And so, right, it's not just, it's not just a matter of how much can I sell this thing for, right? It's a matter of <clears throat> how long did it take me to acquire this thing and, you know, what's my ISK per hour? Hmm, excuse me. If you're trying to plex your account, that's what you need to be looking at, right? Gas sells for a lot, but it takes a long time to gather, so maybe it's actually more profitable to mine Veldspar. Veldspar doesn't sell for much, but you sure do gather it quick. So, um, yeah, that's my, uh, That's what I've got to say about it, I guess. Um, <laughs> TLDR, I don't think that there are any career paths that require you to be Omega, at least to get started. Um, in the long run, you'll probably want to get there. Um, And I think the ones, the activities he lists, well, PVE missions, you can absolutely just do as an alpha. Um, and that's fine. Um, you know, long term. <clears throat> PVP, uh, I think that comes much more down to the skill of the individual. Um, <clears throat> and
and uh, you know, like I said, I don't have that skill. Um, if you're good at PvP, I think you can do that profitably. Um, even as an alpha. Exploration, there are some limits there, right? So um, you can get by, you can do null sec, you can do wormhole. There are going to be some sites that you're not going to be able to open um, or some boxes that you're not going to be able to hack. Um, you know, and a certain amount of that is just, is just luck. Um, you know, there are a lot of, <clears throat> there are a lot of boxes where, you know, that I've hacked where it was, it was iffy whether I was going to be able to do it or not. Um, and, you know, um, I think that's something I've developed some amount of skill at, right, is, uh, figuring out how to get through those paths, you know, but sometimes, uh, sometimes you just get unlucky and you can't do it and the, and the box blows up, um, you know, uh, other times it's about knowing the sites and knowing that, for example, um, in an un unsafe site, you've probably got enough time to hack one box and then you got to get out because there's going to be ships jumping in to fight you or there's going to be, um, or it's going to explode. Um, or both, um, and some of them you just should you just shouldn't go in at all, knowing which ones are which um, is valuable, right? Um, and and yeah, that is gonna that is gonna vary. Um, Uh, one of my other characters um, has a Loki that's fitted for exploration. And, you know, for those unsafe angel sites where things blow up, you know, and uh, cruisers jump in, I can handle that. I can get in there. I can tank the explosion. The cruisers are not really a big deal. I can, you know, I can kill them. I just have to remember to not put my drones out because the explosion will kill them. Um, you know, but I don't have to worry about going into those sites. Um, I haven't done a lot of exploration with that character, you know, so I don't know if I'd be able to, um, for example, uh, complete one of the sleeper sites. Um, I just haven't, just haven't tried it yet haven't uh haven't been willing to risk that ship uh in that particular way and you know i've been doing other things with that character so it's not like it's not like he's just sitting idle um i just haven't tested him in that particular arena so i'm not saying omega doesn't make a difference but but i am saying that alpha is not as limited uh, as it might seem when you're just looking on paper, right? Like we can look at, let me go ahead and just grab these. Right, we can look at our skills lists and see all these yellow dots and be like, ah, oh, man, there's all this stuff I can't do, but um, I don't know, like how much, like, do I actually want to fly capital ships? Right? I mean, bigger is not objectively better. It just depends on what you're trying to do. Um, 
And there's a lot of stuff that bigger ships can't do. Um, you know, so... Um, <clears throat> one of the things with exploration is you scan down combat sites. A lot of the combat sites, at least that I find, since I'm mostly in high sec space, um, won't take a cruiser. Um, some of them are frigate only. Some of them are frigate and destroyer. Um, you know, so, so yeah, the Loki can take those, um, unsafe data sites and can tank the explosion and can easily take out the, the cruisers that jump in. But there are other sites that I just can't run at all because it, the, uh, the jump gate won't let me in because my ship's too big. So, you know, um, But I could scan those down in a, um, you know, in a probe, and then jump in a rifter and go run them, or maybe a thrasher, um, you know. And so those are going to be doable as an alpha. Um, Yeah, anyway, um, kind of rambly, I know, um, hopefully useful to somebody, um, I don't know, hopefully it's, like I said, you know, the, the point of this channel is to see what can be done as an alpha, um, and at this point, uh, maybe, uh, you know, maybe I'm a little bit stuck in a rut. Maybe I'm a little bit, you know, just focused on getting my daily skill points and not trying all those other activities. Maybe, maybe if you're really wondering what is actually possible, it's better to look at those earlier, I don't know, let's say first hundred, uh, episodes, 150 maybe where where I was focused on trying to complete all of the uh the air career tasks right which I have completed all of them um you know for those of you who haven't watched the earlier episodes the let me see if I can find it again yeah the air career program I have completed every single activity in here um, and, you know, and I've, I've picked the ones, you know, I, I do think PVE missions and PVP are probably the most viable activities as an alpha. Um, but just because something isn't the most valuable doesn't mean that it, that you can't do it. Right, and in some ways, uh, trying to do it at a disadvantage can be more fun. I don't know that that's true with mining. Uh, mining's kind of boring, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. Um, you know, I do a lot of it. That's my main use for my four Omega accounts is small fleet mining. Um, you know, but I do that while I'm watching Netflix. Um, right. It's a, it's an activity where I can just chill and be doing something other than just watching TV. So, um, yeah. <clears throat> um, and I think the overall thing is that yes, there is there is a point in every career path where you're gonna wanna do something that is omega locked, but in general, 
I think those are far enough down the road that you've got time to earn the ISK to buy the Plex while you're training those skills. As long as you know what your goal is um, and, you're, and, you're, and you're focused. And that for that, I think uh, I think the skill plan thing is pretty good, right? Um, do right. The one I've got here is the Magic Fourteen, right? These are the these are the fitting skills. In case you're not familiar. Um, Right. Once you've, um, so this is, uh, you know, maximizing your capacitor, maximizing your, your power and CPU, um, you know, minimizing the requirements, uh, how much power your, uh, weapons take, uh, you know, the minimizing the negative impacts of, like having a micro warp drive installed, uh, having rigs installed, all that kind of stuff, right? So this is the stuff that that allows you to be able to to do better fits, right? Um, and it, you know, probably these are the skills that you should focus on first. Um, you know, and I'm perfectly happy to share this plan with anybody who wants it. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's the only corporation. On a couple of other characters, I have some. I've put together skill plans um, for specific ships that I wanted to fly. And one of the cool things about that, right, is um, it'll give you. It'll give you an estimate of your time, right? So I've got another another 166 days. All the rest of the stuff I've got to train is all Omega locked, right? But I know how long that's going to take me. And so I've got time um, um, if I had been focused on trying to make this account Omega, you know, was that roughly third? So half of that, so something like 80 days probably for this white part that I've already trained. Um, that's going on three months. That's enough. According to other people who have done it, that's enough to uh, earn this to plex an account through in-game activity. So, um, yeah, <clears throat> I th again, I think I think there's a there's a perception, uh, you know, of just looking on paper. Uh, you know, looking at the ship tree, looking at the at the skills, you know, at the skill catalog, and you go, oh, there's all this stuff that I can't do. Um, but you know, to be honest, and let's go ahead and pull up the ship tree, right? <clears throat> Pretty much all of the ships that I see in Faction Warfare are in this block, right? It's T1 ships and Navy ships. Every once in a while, I'll see a battle cruiser, right? And those are usually Navy. Um, Maybe a battleship. Those are those are even more rare. But, you know. And I'll see T two frigates. Um especially the uh uh interceptors. 
<clears throat> um, you know, if you're talking about a dedicated fleet, then maybe you start seeing command destroyers, interdictors, um, the, uh, I don't think I've ever seen a scimitar. I think mostly just scythes. Um, you know. And I'm not doing big, big fleet operations, but even when I've gone to like a, um, like a station bash or something, right? That I'm mostly, mostly seeing cyclones and, you know, not, tempests or typhoons so not to say those don't get used um you know i don't know about big uh corp or alliance conflicts that's not the part of the game that i'm experienced with um but I think, you know, even in there, there's a use for somebody in a, in a T1 slasher with that's uh, with a decent tackle fit. Um, <clears throat> that doesn't mind getting blown up, you know? get in there you do what you can for however long you can survive and that's your contribution and you know since it's cheap maybe you've got five of them and uh you just go back and get another one <clears throat> and uh and jump in for more you know um there's value in that in uh fleet level combat so um yeah not to repeat myself too much but there's plenty that you can do as an alpha that's plenty that you can contribute um security access okay that's fine um but i will collect that money All right. Anyway, I've rambled for too long, it's starting to uh, affect my throat. So I think we're going to call it a day. So until next time, have a good one.